Well, me and Jason are pretty much done for the night. We already had our conversation. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Holy shit, man. That was a pain in the dick. Jason, open the show up. Just a second. <clears throat> he has to get a drink, man. Do you need a drum roll? No. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Rising from the grave. It's episode four of the movie Misfits. Four. I'm one of your hosts, Jason Gray. Math is a very hard thing, isn't it, Jason? Fuck me! <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! We were talking so much about episode four. <laughs> we're not there yet, Jason. <laughs> I'll give you a take two. I'm still keeping all of this, but I'll give you a take yeah. two. Yeah. Put it in uh, somewhere in the episode. Hey, you might have to cut the two pieces together to get something decent. <laughs> <laughs> Gods and Don't fire me, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I have no opinion on this subject. <laughs> Shit! Thanks for putting me on the spot, asshole. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thrill me. Movie. 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 Misfits. 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 Well, hey guys, I recommend it to you. <laughs> Rising from the Grave, it's episode three of the movie Misfits. I'm one of your hosts, Jason Gray. And I'm Crippled Cody. And I am John Spooky Rhodes. How's everyone doing tonight? Doing pretty good. Fucking good. frustrated. Uh, just a little peek behind the curtain here, people. Uh, we are an hour behind because uh, we had technical difficulties, and this time it was on my end, and it pissed me off. But we are here. Yeah. I was just going to say, we? <laughs> Usually it's me taking up time. Yeah, shit happens. But we are here, and uh, I'm actually a little excited about this one. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. I'm always excited. But this is a subject that I've never really talked about a whole lot before. So, Yeah, I'm excited too. I'm actually naked right now for this episode. Ooh. Can you lower Jason, the I'm, keeping my, I'm so bit? excited, I'm keeping my clothes on for this one. <laughs> <laughs> you can't handle the naked excitement. <laughs> so, John, what do we have on today's episode for everyone? Well, today, with everything that's kind of going on in the world, and the fact that I just dropped 120... Wait, does my wife listen to this? Probably not. Okay, Don't thank ask God. us. Okay. okay, so I just dropped $122 on a special edition of uh, Dawn of the Dead. I thought, what better than to talk about George Romero's Living Dead films? Fantastic. I love those movies. I, I got to tell you guys real quick, and I didn't just, I didn't even think about it until just this moment. I, when I was a kid, I uh, was bought this Casper uh, VHS tape. Not sure if I told you this before, John, but um, believe it or not, at the end of the VHS tape when Ka the Casper episode was done and over with, it popped into a scene from Night of the Living Dead. And it was all distorted and it was off track and just all of that shit. But it was motherfucking Night of the Living Dead at the end of a Casper video. <laughs> I swear to God. And, it, and my mom freaked out because back then my mom was like, it's the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life. And, and she didn't want like her crippled, vulnerable son watching that. But I thought it was cool. But the fact that I couldn't barely see anything was what made it scary to me. So yeah, 15 minutes of Night of the Living Dead was on a Casper VHS tape. I just had to share that with all you guys. That's what Casper's insane. back from the dead, and he's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> he finally yep. found his body, and now he's out for revenge. I should have researched it on Google if that ever happened to anyone else. I couldn't have been the only kid that got a, a tainted Casper video with Night of the Living Dead. That makes me wonder as to if it was like a, a fucked up run where everyone got that. Or if you just got one where somebody was just like, you know what? Fuck you, boss. I'm putting this over Night of the Living Dead. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I I don't feel like it was just a one VHS tape. It had to have been a small batch right. of them. You know, I I think afterwards we're done with this episode. I might research it to see if it's a thing. If it was a thing back then. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, well, you brought it up, so I, I have to bring up uh, the very first time that I ran across Night of the Living Dead was my first experience with these films as well, and. It was one morning before school. I was just flipping through the channels. And, you know, early in the morning, you'd get some crazy shit on. And I just ran across the very end of Night of the Living Dead. It was like when all the hillbillies were at the house and you were seeing the atrocities happen to the dead. And that just kind of stuck with me. And I didn't even know what the fuck it was. It was just, I happened upon it and it stuck in my mind. And it wasn't until years later when I ended up and rented the VHS that I actually found out what it was from. Yeah. I mean, it, it, again, it depends on what part that you come in on. You know, if you're not watching it from the very beginning. But as a kid, that stuff, it, it has some traumatizing moments in it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I guess I'll share one of my early encounters with the movie since we're going that way. Um, I had heard of the movie before because I would always pick up uh, random magazines to read something about it. So by that point in my life, I had really heard of Night of the Living Dead. But uh, I was visiting my sister and they had gone to bed and I was just flipping through the channels like we all did. And on Nickelodeon, of all things, Nick at Night, They did this occasional show, I think, if I remember right, it was called uh, Midnight Movies with the L.A. Connection. And they would take old movies and overdub them with basically humorous, funny lines. Kind of like Mystery Science Theater, but it was basically redoing a humorous story with it. Okay. And I saw this with Night of the Living Dead, and that was the first time I watched, quote-unquote, the movie. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's that's actually a really interesting first time experience. And, and it was one of those things where you see it and you're like, was that real? And I uh, researched it like 10, 15 years ago and found out, oh, yes, this is actually something that happened. <laughs> I have a quick little side story. Um, I uh, I didn't even see the original Night of the Living Dead first. I When I was a kid, I watched Tom Savini's uh, Night of the Living Dead first. I didn't even know that there was an original. I just thought that the Tom Savini one was the original. And I didn't even see... I seen them all out of order, you guys. I, I first seen Dawn of the Dead, then Day of the Dead as, as a small kid that wasn't even like 12 years old. But then I didn't see Night of the Living Dead until I bought the DVD version of Land of the Dead because it came with a free copy of Night of the Living Dead in it. How awkward. But I liked it. I really liked it when I watched it, though. I like black and white horror movies, John. Really? Yeah, I think I, I, think I saw the remake myself first, not counting the comedy version of it. Make it three for three. I actually saw Tom Savini's first, like, beginning oh. to end. That was the very first one I saw. Oh, I'm not alone then, you guys. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just, oh man. Those movies are fucking awesome, though. Those movies hold up. Like, all, something about all three of them holds up so well still to this day. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you know there's six, right? Well, oh, we're talking about all of them. I thought we were talking about the original three. It's George Romero's Evil Dead, or Evil Dead. <laughs> George yeah, Romero's. Who's fucking up now? <laughs> who's fucking up now? <laughs> so, okay, there's Night dawn day and then land land and then diary sur- sur- uh, what, survival came next or diary diary and then survival uh, land okay. diary then survival all right yeah i guess um that whole hour that john was dicking around uh trying to fix everything we should have clarified that we were talking about all of the romero films even the less popular ones <laughs> Well, it's it's so hard to just leave them out. I mean, yeah, there's the quote unquote holy or unholy trilogy, but he made more, and it just seems wrong to just exclude them. I mean, are all of them at the same quality or as good? 
Obviously nope. not, but... <laughs> uh, well, okay, so let's get into what our favorite ones are. John? Uh, hands down, it has to be Dawn. I absolutely love that film. Um, it's just the scope of it. That, to me, is the one that nails it best, where it feels like this is the apocalypse. The entire world is collapsing, and it just feels like that epic tale that he never really got to tell and he somehow managed to encompass that that atmosphere and just the overall vibe of that with dawn and uh it's just so good um (laughs) actually funny story the very first time i ever saw dawn was uh (laughs) again it was a morning before school and it was on hbo and i just started watching it and I, it was actually like parent teacher day or something like that. And I convinced my mom to let me call off sick to finish watching Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's how cool my mom was. <laughs> Is, I should say. But... I, I was just going to say, what? <laughs> yeah, bombshell, my mom just died. No. <laughs> what? See, I'm the sort of student that would have been like, Mom, can you take me in an hour late? <laughs> That says everything you need to know about me right there. <laughs> I'll go to school to help me finish the movie first. Right? Well, it was parent-teacher day. It wasn't really oh, oh, needed. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah they yeah. would probably let me blow that one off. Right, right. And it was Dawn of the Dead. And, ah, God, it, it's so good. Um, Cody, we went to the 40th anniversary convention for that in Monroeville yeah. Mall, where it was filmed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Got to meet a lot of the people. I paid and did that ridiculous VIP tour where you got to see all the shooting locations and everything. And it was awesome and it was in depth and my wife still has not forgiven me for it because it was a three hour walking tour where they're comparing photos and like (laughs) marbling on the wall. And here you can tell this is where Tom Savini shot the one zombie and you can compare it as she fucking hated that and i was just like this is so fucking cool (laughs) yeah um i i man that was that was one of the most fun things i've i've ever got to go do because i for years upon years i always wanted to go to monroeville mall ever since my teens because you know of dawn of the dead and then when we finally found out about that 40th anniversary convention i quickly talked to a couple of my friends who are into the same stuff as we are and uh, we were we got to go. So yeah, I think me and you were there on different days, but we were definitely both there. Yeah, I tried to, to organize it, and I think your friends just couldn't make it the day that I had the tickets and everything set up for. So you're right, and I because I I did try because I wanted to meet you there, and then I think we were even planning on recording something real quick, like with us there. I um, I think if memory serves. Yeah, it wasn't going to be anything too big, but we were just going to either snap a picture or take a quick video and then post it in the Rabbit and Red uh, group. But um, yeah, man, that was fucking fantastic being there. I I got to meet uh, the girl. Oh, fuck. I forgot her, the actress's name, but she played the blonde girl in the uh, in Dawn of the Dead, the star. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she was Jesus, nice. You know? What blew me away was how much she charged for her autograph. It's like, you, you have Dawn of the Dead and that's it. And you're charging me like, fuck, I forget what it was. It was like I think 50, it was like $35, $40. It was like, yeah, I I was going between like 40 and 50 So I'll low end it and say it was 40 but Okay. I was just she like, was God nice. damn. All right. Yeah. <laughs> she was super nice, though. Um, she, she talked to us for quite a while, but that could have been because she knew she was char- overcharging for a <laughs> goddamn autograph and a picture. Cause, um, so, yeah, I, I enjoyed meeting her. I got to meet Tom Savini, and uh, and we talked about that on one of the other episodes that uh, what my experience was the second time around with Tom Savini. But, uh, you know, and then I got to meet uh, the big black guy from Land of the Dead, the, the big star, the zombie star. So, yeah. Oh, you didn't get to meet Greg Nicotero? I didn't because he wasn't there on the day that I was there. I, I would have loved to have met him. I, I, I probably would have rather talked to him about Army of Darkness than Dawn of the Dead. But uh, still, I would have loved to have met Nicotero. Oh, he was so uh, cool. I, I have to I, say, out of... Uh, everyone there he was my favorite to actually get to meet um he 
he was just so open and down to earth and just carrying on conversation and talking. And he was sending, you know how they all have the the little helpers assistance at the table. And, you know, it kind of goes by your importance. You, you might have one or, you know, two. Nick Taro had like four and he literally had one that was just getting him beer. And of course it had to be wow. put in a, a little koozie because, you know, he couldn't be seen drinking beer. But, like, he, he takes his big old fucking chug of beer, sets it down. He's like, hey, man, nice to meet you. What do you want me to sign it to? And then he's, like, <laughs> taking pictures. He's like, oh, let, no, let's get a couple more. Let's let's really get some good ones. And he, he was That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. I wish I would have got to meet him, man. Uh, I know they're, I mean, it's it was the 40th anniversary. They're all really, really old for the most part. <laughs> um, I got to meet the guy who played Roger. Um, and he just wasn't there. Like he, he just didn't fucking care. You know, he didn't really say much. I don't, I don't know. I understand he's old, but Jesus show a little enthusiasm. You know, I think he was one that I didn't get to meet. Uh, I did get to meet, uh, Ken Foray though. And even, even now in his age, he is still a fucking imposing man. I mean, I'm six one and he stood up and just kind of towered over me. And it's just this huge hulking guy. It's like, holy fuck. Yeah. No, he's fucking awesome. I didn't get to meet him at that convention, but I, he's one of the people I got to meet at that Dark Xmas convention back in the uh, mid-2000s. Because um, he was getting big all over again because of his role in Devil's Rejects. Right. So, and I got to meet him there. And he was, he was fucking awesome. He talked to me for quite quite a while, honestly. Um, so, yeah, I agree. He's awesome. Uh, I haven't really done the tour thing uh haven't met too many people from the movies the only one i can think of off the top of my head is uh i did get a chance to meet tony todd down in atlanta at dragon con wow. i talked to him briefly that's cool i've always kind of wanted to meet tony todd <laughs> guys well first of all jason what what's your thoughts on tony todd was he nice to you oh yeah that's great I, I have a really quick story, a Tony Todd story. I met him also at Dark Xmas. This was in 2007. John, he was drunk when I met him, right? So I go up to him, and I don't know if he took it as an insult or whatever, but I had a DVD copy of Candy Man 3 for him to uh, sign, which I didn't know at the time. That's the worst fucking Candy Man out of all of them, right? Well, I have my friend, my, my, my caretaker, uh, hand him the DVD, and I asked him, I said, how much for this, the signing, buddy? You know, I was a fucking kid back then. I was in my teens. And he goes, he looks at me and he goes, oh, man, for you, Cody, don't even worry about it. Right? So I'm thinking, like, fucking cool. Like, he's going to sign my DVD. And it's all free and shit. Probably pitying me because I'm crippled and all that. But that's cool, you know? And then as he's handing my caretaker back the DVD, his agent is walking back over at the same time. And then as... After his agent comes back over, you could see Tony Todd starts, like, patting down his pockets. And he goes, oh, man, Cody, did you hand me that 10? And I was thinking, you son of a bitch. Like, you just told me it was fucking free. And I, I wasn't about to argue with Candyman. So I just had my friend give him the $10, and we went on our way. So that's my that's my Tony Todd story. <laughs> so... John, you never got to meet Tony Todd. I have not got that pleasure yet, no. Mm, make sure he's sober. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, is Night of the Living Dead your favorite uh, out of all six of them? Or what, what would you say your favorite is? I kind of got to go with um, John. I really love Dawn of the Dead. It's got the whole allegory stuff with uh, the mall and everything, and... It doesn't hit you over the head with it. Right. And it's got that right mix of uh, story, good gore and kills, and um, it set the standard that all the other movies try to live up to. I will say, though, uh, Day of the Dead, I watched that for the first time just last year, I'm sad to say, and that might overtake it but i need to watch it a few more times first mm -hmm. that that's a really good one too yeah that that is 
a hundred percent understandable. Um, I was kind of down on that one. It didn't really live up to it until uh, in the more recent years. I, I've gone back and revisited that uh, one for Grave Shift Radio. And I've seen it, I think, once since then. And I'm glad that that one's finally kind of getting the recognition it deserves. It is a lot smaller and more claustrophobic, kind of in the vein of Night of the Living Dead. But that one's just so fucking bleak and nihilistic. And yeah. Tom Zavini, Greg Nicotero fucking kill it in that one. That is easily some of the best special effects work I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, I, I would just like to say my favorite out of all of them is by far Day of the Dead. Right. Um, I, you know, I grew up feeling that Dawn of the Dead was my favorite, but I feel like I only thought that because of the mall aspect, because I love going to the mall. I still love going to the mall. And growing up, it was so interesting, you know, being survivors in a mall, you know, fending off the zombie horde. But as an adult, to me, the scariest one, and like you said, the, the most sadistic and nihilist one out of all of them is is Day of the Dead. I like... I really it, it I like it because it drives home the factor of humans turning on each other and, and how people can just lose their fucking minds. Yeah. And even more so to the extent that the scientist th that was trying to domesticate uh, the zombies like that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I like the slower moments of, of that one. Uh, and again, maybe it's because I can look at Day of the Dead as kind of a standalone film, but. It, it it was it's so unique and it does hold up to this day with the special effects and the gore effects. Like I showed a couple of scenes of that movie to one of my friends who's not really a horror fan and they they were shocked over like like the part where they get torn apart at the end. Oh my and god! His eyeballs mm -hmm. get torn out and just all of it. Like oh my god! Like that some of that shit is fantastic even still to this day. Um, I will tell you guys don't watch the that newest Day of the Dead movie. I think it's. <laughs> bloodlines don't fucking watch it if you have already it's terrible i don't know why i kind of have an obsession with all the the little knock off ones that are out there i've seen too many and none of them are good there, there's at least two other day of the dead movies oh, yeah. that have nothing to do with why did they pick that one like is that because that's the easiest to attack like i there, there's no other Dawn of the Dead ripoffs. There's no Night of the Living Dead ripoffs. I don't oh, count. There, there is. There is. Oh, oh yeah. no, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. There was that one with Sid Hag in it, and they uh, it was called Night of the Living Dead 3D or something like yep. that. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay, that's horrible. there was that one. That's a very forgettable movie as well. Yeah, and <laughs> there's okay. there's even more than that because you know the title's not copyrighted or wasn't for the longest time. I don't know if they've ever fixed that, but. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of them out there, and almost none of them are good. <laughs> yeah. No, just the original and the Tom Savini one are the only respectable movies. Um, but yeah, man, Day of the Dead is, is my all-time favorite one. I like, I got, it has my favorite characters in it. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I love the Roger character from Dawn of the Dead. Like, he, his character was the life of that movie for me. And, uh, you know, the, the black guy, he was, of course, the smarts of the movie. And he just he knew what to do. And you knew that guy was probably going to survive at the end of the movie. But overall, just like you said, the claustrophobicness of, of of Day of the Dead with them underground and the entire world above them is already apocalyptic. That everything's destroyed. Like something about that is way more scarier than being held up in a mall. And in a mall, you can survive for quite a while, but underground, like, I don't know, that just, some about that, that just seems so scary to me. And so, yeah, if I have to choose one that I would want to show a new person that, like, wants to see classic zombie movies, I will show them Day of the Dead. Well, two things about what you said there is, uh, first, when you said Day of the Dead feels more apocalyptic, and I think that's because they each kind of take place at different time frames. So to me, Dawn obviously is the, the time period right. Well, it's all settling in, 
You know, it, it is pretty much like the next day after this happened. I screwed up. I actually meant to say it felt post-apocalyptic to me. But that that still works because to me, Day of the Dead, this is probably months later and, you know, most of the world population is gone. You know, that that's kind of the difference between Dawn and Day to me is Dawn, there's still hope. Like, it, it, it's fleeting, but it still feels like there's hope to that film. Day of the Dead, it doesn't feel like there is any hope. Did you just say Date of the Dead? Day of the Dead? <laughs> hey, we they should make like a, a, um, a romantic Valentine's Day spinoff called Date of the Dead. I wouldn't be surprised if that actually exists. Isn't there I a know. movie called Dance of the Dead? Yes, there is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, and I kind of love it. <laughs> I was just going to say, I feel like I remember it being a decent like horror comedy type of movie. Well, there was there was also the ah oh, fuck, Jason, help me out here. What was the the rom com based around a zombie apocalypse? Uh, warm bodies. Warm bodies. There was also that one where you know they tried to jump on the whole Twilight bandwagon, and unfortunately, I, I didn't really see like it. that one too. It's, I didn't even see that one. It's not bad. I I can freely admit it's not bad. I I do like how they they kind of got into why. They eat brains, even though that's not part of the George Romero canon. But I, I yeah. like their explanation. Um, I'll gloss over this because this isn't a part of the subject. But the last zombie movie that I very, very much enjoyed, I think it was called Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. That's not bad. It, it, it had some good stuff in it. I, oh, I yeah. really liked it. But... Yeah, man, like nothing is better than the Romero zombie movies. And, um, you know, we covered basically the three, the the first initial three. But let me ask, what are you guys' thoughts on what's next? Land of the Dead? And then what is it after that? Is it a Diary, Diary of the Dead? Diary, And yeah. then Survival. Well, before we move on to the, the latter trilogy, uh, real quick, we just kind of glossed over night when we were kind of saying well we all saw the remake first when did oh, you yes. guys actually get around to seeing the original um i did not see it in its entirety and normally until i picked up the millennium edition dvd back in the early 2000s okay that's actually it's around one of, it's one of those movies that you know you absorb through cultural osmosis you just it everywhere so it was never really a big priority for me. Right. No, that's a hundred percent true. And it was kind of the same thing for me is I never really had an interest because I saw the Tom Savini one. I knew what the story was. And for whatever reason, it, it didn't, it just didn't speak to me. I saw it at a Halloween party, uh, in the early two thousands. I was, uh, a little too inebriated to really appreciate it or understand anything in it besides what it was were you doing things at that party you wasn't supposed to oh yeah okay <laughs> but um it wasn't until god i i will be completely honest the first time i actually sat down and watched it in its entirety was with the criterion edition so that can be shame on me but that was the first time i i actually sat down paid attention and watched the entire thing and uh it's it is a very good film. What's the Criterion version? What does that mean? Oh, it's just uh the newest edition put out. Criterion basically tries to preserve uh films that are considered almost art worthy, you know, the the really uh, pinnacle of films. So Got it. Okay. Um was that the end of your thought on it? Oh uh, well one one more thing. Um it is not my favorite, but I can totally see why it is people's favorite because kind of watching it to me, it's almost like the 60s version of the Evil Dead because it's it's something you hadn't seen really before and it's kind of revolutionary. It's also got its flaws where you can pinpoint them and, and you know, nitpick it apart, but the passion and the work put behind it and into it really shines through. So I, I think a lot of people's draw to it is a nostalgia on first time experiencing it and how revolutionary it was, but also the passion put behind it. 
Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, when I was younger, much like Jason said, like you hear about it so much and then you like, you feel like you already know so much about it, you know, before you even watch it. Um, I, one of the movies I watched a lot growing up was, uh, I think it was Halloween two. And wasn't that the movie where someone was watching night of the living dead or something like that? There was a couple of scenes in there. Cause I think so. Yeah, like I, because I always remembered that they're coming to get you, Barbara line, but I definitely heard it from another movie. But then again, there's plenty of movies throughout the years that people have been watching Night of the Living Dead on TV because it's a public domain movie now. Um, like I said earlier, I uh, I actually didn't watch it for the first time until I got it as like a free bonus when I bought Land of the Dead on DVD. It was like a, a Suncoast bonus, <laughs> I believe. So I'm not even sure if I would have ever watched it if I hadn't got it for free when I bought Land of the Dead. Yeah, it's kind of funny how we're all fans of his uh, universe, but none of us were really drawn to Night. Which is just really interesting to me to kind of think of that because so many people hold it in such high regard that I think it kind of speaks to our tastes. Honestly, I think the only thing that about Night of the Living Dead that's not outdated is the message that it, it carries throughout, especially at the end. I, there's so much that's outdated, like the special effects or lack thereof, and the tension is kind of outdated and the music is still classic in my opinion, the, you know, the, the mm -hmm. tension brought up with the music and there, there are some tense scenes in it, you know, the, the part with the daughter in the basement, you know, killing her mother and all that stuff. And, but overall I do feel that night of the living dead. Oh my God. is it's kind of the weakest one out of all of them. I, and I, I might even put that up against some of the later ones too. I don't know. I understand you can't have the later ones and all of them without the original, but I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I, nothing about the original kind of grabs me too much, to be honest. Well, to be honest, we, we have to give it its due because it is the one that made zombies what they are today. If it wasn't right. for George Romero in that film, we wouldn't have zombies. I mean, you're right. They existed yeah. before, but they were, you know, voodoo Haitian zombies that were just, you know, slaves for a yeah. lack of a better term. Yeah. They were a, a person that was enslaved through magical means. Whereas George created the, the modern zombie with right. night of the living dead. So, Real quick here, um, what were you guys' complaints? Of, and I know you guys got them. What were you guys' complaints about the remake of Dawn of the Dead? <laughs> uh, the, the Zack Snyder one? Yeah, the 2004. I thought it was a little too polished, a little too 2000s. It was very much of its time. You could tell it was very much that style of movie. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have nothing against it. I actually like the remake as far as remakes go. I don't like zombies that run, to be honest. Not when it comes to, like, a remake of a George Romero zombie yeah. movie, you know? Like, th that kind of, that takes away, I think, a little bit from a zombified enemy. Like, if, mm -hmm. if you're zombified, you're not, you can't run. Like, it, they're zombies. So, I don't know. Um, I, I would say my complaints, uh, overall, first off, I do like the film. I think it's, it's quite good. But my, my complaints are, I think some of the characters just aren't that likable. And right. the overall feeling in the mall isn't really that bleak. It, it doesn't quite capture that we're all fucked. We're gonna die. Once they're in the mall and you're having your montages and stuff, it almost feels like, well, this is just everyday life. It's like, no, that's, that's not what Dawn of the Dead is. It's, it's trying to grasp with the downfall of society and preserve some hope, even though the world is now shit. Yeah, I really liked how the remake of Dawn started. Like, oh, yeah. I, I, I did really like the opening, but you're right. After when they got in the mall, it was just kind of plain Jane and, and it didn't bring anything good to the table, I thought. I don't know. All right, but we should address the latter trilogy. Um, and obviously for me out of those uh land of the dead is the best and it's actually my third favorite so 
Yeah, I like land. So I'm going to admit something here. I've never seen survival. That's fine. That's that is that is perfectly fine. That is the the preferred answer to have. And I will say right now, don't change that. See, that just makes it more likely I'm going to go seek it out. Uh, I'm going to admit that I have um, very little recollect of survival or diary. So <laughs> it's... that's preferable. Uh, <laughs> I think land. Um, I know George wasn't that high on land, um, mostly because it was it was a studio film. And I, I think oh. he felt a little pigeonholed or, you know, he, he just loves that or loved that creative freedom he had with being an indie director. But I really like land and the story within that, because <laughs> that's the thing with George and his evil, evil dead. I keep wanting to say that his living dead films was that they all had a message beyond just the dead and people trying to survive it. And with that one, it's, it's class warfare. And Mm -hmm. especially today and our world right now, it's more, you know, relevant than ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I really love land of the dead because if you think about it, you've got like two thirds of the super Mario brothers movie in that movie. (laughs) (laughs) And that's I noticed that right off the bat when I watched it in theaters. Like, holy shit, like you got Luigi and, and King Koopa in this movie. But um I don't know, Land of the Dead felt good to me. I, I like the fact that this cause the zombies were smarter in, in that movie. The, you know, the big black guy for the zombie, he was very he was the smart one, right? And that just it felt that I don't know. It it felt different, but in a good way. I, I wasn't aware that uh, Romero didn't like that movie. That it's much. not that he didn't like it. Um, I just don't think he enjoyed the process of making it and under the studio. Has Romero ever um, stated which one of his favorite out of all of them? Uh, I feel like I heard it at some point, but I don't remember. I think he would have gone with Night or Dawn. For some reason, I was actually thinking dawn as well um i i know dawn is the one where he got go ahead i I think he might not go with night just because of how that all turned out with uh some of the stuff going behind the scenes and having it go uh public domain i can understand him kind of being all uh uh, down on that experience right and i know with dawn it was the one out of I think all of them really where he was able to get his his full true vision for the film out there and it, it's quite famous that his vision for Day of the Dead was drastically different but you know due really? to Oh yeah yeah that... See I'm I'm out of the loop on this could you could you guys first um cuz even some of our listeners might not even know uh, could you first let me know what what was the problem with the original Night of the Living Dead with it going public domain? But then let me know also what was the problem with Day of the Dead? Jason, okay, I'll, I'll um, hand this over. I, I'm going to let it bounce back to you for Day of the Dead because I'm not as familiar with that one. Okay. If you don't mind. I'm going with a lot of memory on this, so I might get some of the details wrong. Uh, Night of the Living Dead was basically just an error. They had a... Uh, different title for the movie and with that version the copyright notice was in the credits but afterwards there was some sort of issue and they changed the title to what we know it is now of night of the living dead and when they changed the new title card they didn't put in the copyright notice so the movie was never properly copywritten wow and it was in public domain ever since so that is that does that explain why there's so many horror movies and low budget movies that are just people are just watching Night of the Living Dead on yep, the couch? Absolutely. Because they don't have because to pay for it. They can use it for free. Yep. Wow. The upside of it is you didn't have to pay to use it, so it was on TV all the time or in the theaters. It was the go to movie anyone could use because they didn't have to pay. Wow. Which is honestly probably why it became so famous and infamous, but yeah. it it was it was such a quick turnaround that it was just an oversight because I, I think it was Night of the Flesh Eaters was the original title. Yeah, that sounds about right. And 
they they had to change that out last minute. I, I think that was a distribution thing or it, it <laughs> might have existed somewhere, but they had to change it. And I think it was like they had a day or two to change that title card in the film. And they just, it was an oversight. They just overlooked it and it's fucked him ever since. Because for the longest time, that was the highest grossing independent film ever made. Wow. And it, like Night of the Flesh Eaters, like that made perfect sense because that's all that they were doing in, in the original movie. They weren't called zombies or anything like that. And didn't that movie, didn't the original movie, did it take place in Ohio? No. No, they all take like, place in uh, Pennsylvania. Well, the majority of them take place in Pennsylvania, specifically around Pittsburgh. Okay. So, John, tell me a little bit about Day. Okay, so he had backing because Dawn was made in connection with uh, Argento. So he had backing for Day, and his plan was that it was going to be his grand opus his epic and it was going to be about world war involving zombies where they were weaponized and countries were using zombies against each other in this apocalypse and the budget got cut and the budget got cut and the budget got cut to the point where he had to completely rework everything but he already had all these ideas about the military and, and you know how they interact with civilians and all that in his mind so he ended up and had to really pare down that story to be just this small story in this isolated spot where they could shoot it in some mines outside of Pittsburgh no oh, the place where they have the event horizon uh footage basically yeah <laughs> No, you know, that makes a lot of sense because if you really think about it, what sense did it make that that military group was, like, underground? You know, like, they didn't really give a great explanation of why that was. I just always kind of took it as it was a military bunker and, like, these scientists and stuff got ushered there real quick as as all this was going on and they just kind of had to make do and eventually their contact with the outside was cut off as the apocalypse grew. Mm, Yeah, that's a good point. Now, see, if that new spinoff that new day of the dead bloodline if wanted to be like you know unique and different they could have tried to do you know they kind of tried to do a storyline like that and make it a little bit different but i uh, because could they have gotten in trouble for that i mean they were still using the the title so i wouldn't see why that that's the one with the medical student and they're they're like in colorado right yeah yes 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 and it came out a couple of years ago i right. think uh, that one just kind of blew me away because at, at least, no, because the, the story of, of day of the dead is how, uh, I think it's captain. I wanted to say Colonel, but it's captain Rhodes and how he kind of loses his mind and under the stress of command and, and the, the remake that we're just now talking about, he's like the only good sane character. Where he's right. saying, no, leave these people fucking outside, leave the gates closed. Like, th- he should be the asshole, but he's the only one that I was kind of like, no, you know what? He's right. You know, listen to him. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking that too. Like, man, that this guy, he's, he's playing this character that's supposed to be super vile, uh, that like he was in the original, and he's just not. He, he's just not good. He wasn't good casted for the bad guy. I just don't think it was well written because he had like one scene where he was kind of an asshole. And then after that, it was just like, this guy makes total sense. The rest of these people are just fucking assholes. They're just like, oh, no, fuck you and your rules. We're going to let zombies in. It's like, are you insane? The rest of the world's fucking dead. I don't think it helped that they made it to where he had a brother that was in in, and on it, too. And like helping him get a little mushy about things that, yeah, it that, that movie had potential to be something decent, but they it, it was not good. No. Jason, don't watch it. <laughs> when we say that, that just encourages him to watch it. All right, Jason, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but does not compute. Don't know what you can do now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Land of the Dead to me, I, I think is his last great film. Um. I, I really love the story there and, and how you were talking earlier about how uh, I think the character's name was Big Daddy, the, the uh-huh. black zombie that was intelligent. 
most people that's their issue is that they had this intelligent zombie that evolved that learned i don't get why people are bothered by that because if you watch all of his movies they get slowly smarter and smarter with each one right and that's one of the things i love about the series right with the very first one they're using primitive tools with uh dawn we're, we're getting that they're remembering their old lives and kind of going through the motions and trying to reconnect with that and then with day you actually have bud who not only is remembering but he's he uses a gun. He he builds relationships, and then we get this where it's all just the the continued evolution. But I think the fix would be have the mechanic just be Bud. Just mm-hmm. have it look like him, and I guarantee everyone would have been on board with it. Um, how many years was it between Day and and Land? Oh shit, a lot. Oh uh, uh, yeah. I- like Why 12? was that? Day of the Dead? Was that still in the eighties? Uh, Day of the Dead was eighty five. Do- uh, Land of the Dead was two thousand five. Oh shit. wow, twenty years! Yeah, holy shit! Well, it was there any reason that did any of us know like why they waited so long? I think he was mm-hmm. just kind of done with the land or the land with the dead. <laughs> I, I think he was just kind of done with it. Like I think he had told his story. And then it just, zombies started to become hot again. And what was that Universal that put out land, right? Yeah, it was Universal. Universal, didn't they do the remake of Dawn? Oh. uh, Possibly. I don't know. I think they they did. I think it was, I I thought, I don't know. But um, I think, because what made zombies hot again? Was it the remake of Dawn of the Dead or was it something before that? It uh, wasn't the Resident Evil movie. I know that. No, Resident Evil brought him back into the popular consciousness because of the video game. Oh, uh, And, and yeah. then we started getting more movies. Um, and I would say uh, 28 Days Later played yep, a factor into it. Absolutely. And the Walking Dead comic book also played a huge role. Right. Because, like, was there anything good, like good zombie wise from the nineties? The twenty eight days come out in the nineties. No, uh, that was a uh, uh, early two thousands. I want to say two thousand one. That's what I'm talking to. Yeah, I know there was a lot of uh, comparisons with nine eleven because of some shots. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Um, was there any uh, anything zombie related in the nineties? Um. I know there was, but anything yeah. noteworthy, not that comes to mind at all, no. Mm. Didn't Romero do other things in between? Oh, he did a yeah. shit ton. <laughs> yeah. Like, he did a movie called Bruiser or something, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. He did, uh, he did, what was it, The Dark Half? Um, I think that was his follow up to Day. I might be wrong there. He he did uh, Tales from the Dark Side. He created that TV series, so he had a very long career. And I think a lot of his career was actually oh, yeah. just employed at one of the studios uh, to just come up with ideas and, and shit like that. So there was a time period there where he didn't really put out a whole lot, but he was still getting paid and and being productive. But yeah, like like I said, I think it was just it was back in the public consciousness, and someone at <laughs> Universal was just like, well, let's. Talk to George. He's the godfather of all this. Let's toss him some money and see what he has. Oh, so. and you know what else I just remembered? Um, Uwe Boll did uh, House of the Dead oh, in yeah. the early 2000s, right? And yeah. that, <laughs> I mean, come on. That was a fun movie. It just wasn't a good movie. It's a guilty pleasure. It is a guilty pleasure. <laughs> did you guys ever see the second one? No. Yes. Don't. Jason, don't. I'm being serious. Although don't. they – they did beat The Walking Dead with covering yourself in zombie blood and guts. Yeah, yeah, that is the one thing that that House of the Dead two did. They did do that before The Walking Dead did. Yep. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> There's some nice titties in the two as well. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that out there. But um, yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I thought about titties, and now my brain's all haywire. That's all right, Jason. Uh. You haven't even really got to talk about it yet. So what is kind of your thoughts on Land of the Dead? I really enjoyed it. Uh, It's been a while since I've seen it, but I did like the look at class warfare. Um, Pretty much agree with everything you guys have already said. I do kind of agree with 
uh, Romero not liking it because you could kind of feel it was a big studio movie. It did have that feel to it. Right. But it, it's still a Romero zombie movie, so there's a lot going for it. Absolutely. No, I really enjoyed it. And uh, Smart Zombie is cool by me. Yeah, I'm, I'm I good really with that. wanted to know where things were going to go after it. And instead of anything really interesting, we got Diary of the Dead. <laughs> well, and that's not fair because I actually kind of like Diary of the Dead. I don't remember it too well, but I don't have anything against it either. Well, also to your point, um, that's the last one that we got in the timeline. Like, that's the last one if we're going in, like, the actual timeline of the films. Because mm -hmm. Diary of the Dead actually takes place the exact same time as Night of the Dead. Mm -hmm. and, and I just thought Diary of the Dead, while not the best movie in the series by a long shot, it was still interesting to see them try to do a Romero zombie movie as a found footage film. I thought it was going to be good because of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will be honest, because well, I saw Land of the Dead in the theater. Uh, my girlfriend at the time surprised me and we went to go see it. I, I was a little disappointed at the time, but I've come around to really love that one. It also introduced me to Aja Argento, which thank you. But anyway, uh, the, the unrated cut of that is really good. Yeah. But Diary of the Dead, uh, I rented on DVD when it first came out. I don't think it really got much of a theatrical push. It, it wasn't, it was direct to DVD. Oh, Okay. And uh, I actually, I, I liked it, but I've gone back once or twice, and it, last year it was on, I think, IFC or something, right around Halloween. And I remember listening to Dave Z, and he, he actually defended it, saying, you know, it's not that bad. And it's like, well, my memory's not that it's that good, but I, I, I started to watch it. And I got to the hospital scene, and once that was kind of over, I, I, my experience with the film was over. It just... It did not connect with me. I just did not enjoy it. And I appreciate what he tried to do, you know, exploring new venues and, and going back to the original night and exploring that. And I like his message there with that one, too, about how social media and, and the Internet is, is such a major factor in our lives and society mm -hmm. now. And I like his his look at that. The rest of it's not that good. And his comedy that he added in, like, this is the first one where it really stands out, mm -hmm. and it's not good. The Amish mechanic that can fix an RV that's mute and talks with a fucking chalkboard. What? I forgot about that. Right? Or or the fact that it starts with uh, the the woman narrating it and saying how she added in sound effects and stuff like that for effect. You're supposed to be watching a fucking documentary. The effect should be the whore that plays out fucking before you. And then, on top of that, throughout the entire movie, she's bitching about this guy filming. And how it's a fucking stupid idea. And just set the camera down and let's just try and survive this. And then she's the one that fucking posts it together and puts it up on the internet. It's like, are, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, a little far-fetched, some of it. I... Ugh. Okay, to me, as somebody who is a writer, uh, not to toot my own horn, but I have written a few scripts, I've written a novel, none of it's been published. The only thing of mine that's ever been published was a fucking poem, so yeah, I know, I, that means nothing. But, somebody who has an understanding of that, Diary of the Dead feels like a polished first draft, and Survival of the Dead feels like a rough first draft like he just spewed mm -hmm. out all his thoughts didn't even really iron it out and was like fuck it good enough let's film it whereas diary of the dead it, it doesn't really feel like he went back over it with a fine tooth comb and was like okay this works this doesn't it just feels like he had his rough draft he smoothed it out and he never went back over that and was just like well obviously you know this doesn't make sense <laughs> and you're right like Diary of the Dead and Survival of the Dead feel like polished turds. And <laughs> I love and if, that. And if you didn't know that they were George Romero zombie movies, you wouldn't fucking know because they're they don't have that feel no. from uh, that like the original trilogy does. They just feel like 
put them in the can, put them in a Walmart bargain bin, and call it a day type of zombie movies. What made Romero decide to do two more after Land? Like, what, what do you guys know that? I got nothing. Paycheck? Probably. See, and that's it. And again, if that's the case, he, he didn't have his heart in it. I, I think the other thing with Diary is he wanted to try to do a found footage movie because those were big at the time, and he had that idea to uh, work in the social media aspects of it. But because he's an older school filmmaker, he had to find a way to justify basically making it filmic, like with the music and, and cuts. And it is so ham-fisted, and I, I agree with you on that. I, I, Man, I hate to say this because it's going to make me sound like I'm shitting on Romero or anything like that, but I'm not. And in, in today's world, you can't have older people trying to write sometimes for younger audiences you know take vince mcmahon the owner of the wwe he he's shit at writing for a younger (laughs) audience these days and i'm not saying romero was shit at it i'm just saying like a lot of it missed the point a a lot of it was was a a mute point in, in a weird kind of way like land of the dead you're right that was his last good zombie movie well You are mostly right, in my opinion. I think his point is still valid, and it's still good, and even today, it's probably more relevant than ever just because of the world we live in, but it's it's just not well done, and that's why it feels so odd, because I don't think he fully understood it, but even what he's just trying to get across still works. Mm -hmm. I I think the, the difference is, is George was different. And to him, in my understanding, none of the films were ever about the dead. The dead were just something that he used to kind of tell his other stories, his, his, you know, social stories. And they were just a puppet part of it. And I think these were just he wanted to tell a story about where he saw the influences of the Internet affecting us and he used that and with survival i he wanted to make a comedy i guess i i Let's don't understand that one he was senile by the time survival was made <laughs> I, I wouldn't argue with you i've seen it. it it's in the scheme of all six it makes no sense it is the one that i can totally point out and say this is not a george romero film you, you know john it, um Here's a good example of a movie because Diary of the Dead, you said, takes place at the same time that Night of the Living Dead does, right? Right. Because it's been years since I've seen these movies, so I don't remember. And it was a poor execution. You can do stuff like that. Take um, Curse of Chucky, for an example. They went back to the original Child's Play, and that movie, it made sense, in my opinion. It, it, it didn't overdo it. But it, it, it added to the original and what was going on behind the scenes of the original, and they did it decent enough. And, and uh, Diary of the Dead, it just, I don't think, it, it happened too well. Um, imagine the shit canister that Day of the Dead could have turned into had Day of the Dead been made around the time that Diary or Survival of the Dead had been made. With all the troubles that he had with the budgets and all that, imagine. You know what I mean? Because like Day of the Dead, right. it was... Yeah, he salvaged Day of the Dead, what he had to work with, and then the, the amazing special effects work. If it wasn't for the amazing special effects work, I'm not sure if enough to set it apart uh, and make it unique amongst um, the, you know, the original trilogy. I, I think you nailed it right on top of the head with the budget, and that's really what held him back because he had such a little budget. He still went ahead, and they just couldn't afford the effects, the actors, and... What they did get, he didn't bother to rewrite to make it work. I mean, if I was making a movie and the best actors I could get was us, I'm going to go back over and make sure that script works for us. Because you're not getting, you know, John Leguizamo or, you know, Aja or... Jesus Christ, I can't talk. I I just had a fucking stroke, I guess. But You're going to have a lot of editing on this episode, buddy. (laughs) But you're, n- you're not getting actors of that quality that can just embody these roles. You're getting actors that are basically themselves, and you've got to kind of rework your entire script to work with them. And I don't think he cared to. Yeah. 
By the way, if you were going to make a movie starring us, you better rewrite some goddamn wheelchair ramps in that script. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I, I think we kind of shit on Diary enough. And in my opinion... Can we call it Diarrhea of the Dead? I mean, it it has... It's merits. I'm not willing to say it is just a piece of shit. I, I'm willing to say it's not good, but survival of the dead, I'm completely willing to say is a piece of shit. I mean, because, yeah. Jason, you said you haven't even seen this one. This one no. is about the um, National Guardsmen that uh, appear in Diary of the Dead, and mm -hmm. it picks up with them pretty much right after they meet the kids. And how they're trying to basically find some place that's safe, some safe haven. And they end up going to this island. And there's these two Irish families, for whatever reason, on this island. And they're just at war with each other. Even though this apocalypse is going on, we still are in this Hatfield and McCoy situation where one family thinks we can turn the dead around and make them work. And the other family, we got to kill them all. And I'm talking like that because that's pretty much how the characters are written in the film. They're just these Irish hicks. And our, our National Guardsmen are just tossed into this. And it's bad. There's so much fucking comedy in it. Like, literally at one point, a stick of dynamite is tossed into a, a building, blows up, and a character standing there covered in ash... And I just remember watching this thinking, what the fuck is this? It's pretty much like Looney Tunes level. It's like the scary movie version of, of a Romero film. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I'm not sure how much of it was intentional. Like, I know that he wanted humor. I just don't think he fully grasped how far it went. Yep. I, just, I, I really don't know what to say about that film because... I, I don't even understand the message that's in it. Uh, I guess the, the overall message is pretty much the, the same as day that we're our own worst enemy and that we can't overcome some of our differences. But I, I don't know. There's not a whole lot of redeeming factors to that film at all. They should have stopped at land. And, and yet I'm still curious what's going to happen with the two scripts that are being worked on right now. The last one's more by his son, but I don't know how much George might have had something to do with those. Well, I I know when he passed, he was working on, what was it, uh, Road of the Dead or... Something like that. Something like that. And yeah. uh, now his son has come out, who's actually made a couple of his own films. I haven't seen any of them, but he's finally ready to step into his dad's uh, living dead world. And from my understanding, he kind of wants to tell his own story taking place on the same day as night. Like, Ugh. from my understanding, he wants to tell the story of Evan City, where Ben was, where it broke out. So that's honestly, that's that's always kind of interested me. Mm -hmm. And I'll admit, I've always kind of had this desire to write. And as a teen in the 90s when there wasn't a lot of this good shit out there or coming out and I was just watching the old stuff, I ended up starting a script about that, what happened in Evan City on that day. And granted, like looking back on it, I still remember my ideas and it wasn't good. Like my idea was you, you pick up and it's this stranger coming into town as it starts to break out and we're going to follow this guy but we're going to see the diner get shot up. We're going to see Ben run out. So we would get a brief cameo with Ben, knowing that he's going to go off and have Night of the Living Dead. But then we'd stay in Evan City with this new group of people. And it was it was pretty much a, a bad like sci-fi movie that I'd worked out in my head. But eh, I like that concept, and I think that's a good idea to explore. As <sighs> if he has the chops to do it, I'm not sure. Would have been better than Survival, probably. <laughs> I'm curious to see the last Romero movie yet because I want to see one more Romero film and hope it's good it's not and, <laughs> and uh, the one by his son I'm curious to see what he will do with the property 
Uh, me Fingers too. Fingers crossed. I'm very curious about that. I don't. I don't think he ever really got past a writing on Road of the Dead, so I, I don't think there's a film there. Uh, someone yeah. else might pick it up, but yeah, they're they're in some level of development right now. Really, that's yeah. shocking. I bet Uwe Boll can do a good job with it. <laughs> well, he's he's retired from filmmaking now, but oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not surprised to hear that. <laughs> God. Did you guys ever see that dumpster fire of a movie, uh, Postal? I fucking love nope. Postal. I'm not even going to lie. That's my favorite film okay. of his. It was okay of a movie. I'm going to go back and watch it again. But it definitely had some very insensitive things in it that would be even more offensive in today's world. So I should go back and watch it again. It was his film where he just tried to offend everyone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, definitely... Uh, come it. on. he He's funding his films with... Jewish teeth from a Nazi stronghold because he's a character in his own film. Uh, yep. Vern, Vern Troyer is Vern Troyer in it and fulfills a prophecy by being raped by a million monkeys or a thousand monkeys or something like that. <laughs> uh, it, it is <clears throat> fucking bat shit. It is considered his best movie, I think. I consider it his best movie. I actually... I haven't seen it in quite some time, but I remember laughing quite heartily at it. I mean, as long as you can actually separate yourself from what is going on and not be offended that it actually opens up with a 9-11 joke. Like, if you can separate yourself and just look at it as a work of comedy, I think it's funny. But it is offensive as fuck. Yeah, well, that's the kind of stuff I find funny is things that are insensitive for the time period. So I should go back and watch it. I, yeah, I'm surprised you don't love it. I might love it. I I'll have to go, dude. I'm telling you, I um I was watching it back in 2010, and then no joke, this girl this girl called me up. I went out and hung out with her in her car, and she blew me in her boyfriend's car. So I just wanted to tell you guys that. <laughs> you just had to brag. Yeah. yeah I just, <laughs> well, that's what I remember about Postal. I was watching it, and then I got a blowjob from a girl that I didn't even think I was going to get a blowjob from. So <laughs> you're welcome for that story, Jason. Uh, thank you. <laughs> But can we all agree that Survival of the Dead is the worst? Even though Jason hasn't seen it, I think that speaks yeah. volumes enough that Jason hasn't I, even seen it. I mean, I mean, I think it speaks volumes that every time we bring up Survival, one of us changes the fucking subject. So, yeah. Valid point. <laughs> valid point. Um, So, real quick then, before we kind of wrap this up, how would you guys, uh, how would you rank them? Ooh, huh. Jason, go ahead. Uh... I'll put Diary of the Dead at the bottom. Then probably Land or Night. I'm not sure which one would go which, but one of those and then the other. Uh, Day of the Dead and then Dawn of the Dead. Okay. Uh, and obviously no comment on survival. <laughs> uh, for myself, survival's obviously last. Um... I'd probably rank it around number 10 and, and then I'm going to jump up to, to number five and, and that's how far down it is. It doesn't even belong on the same scale of to six. I have to put it farther down. Maybe it's 12. It is even. bumped further down the list by movies that don't even exist. Right, right. No, I'm, I'll even take some of those shitty properties like uh, uh, Day of the Dead, Bloodlines. That's better than that. Like, I'll put that on there. And There you go. That's true, too. <laughs> But all right, so survival's last. Um, diary. Then I'm gonna say uh, night. As controversial as that might be, that that's mine. Um, land, day, dawn. Wow. I'm gonna have to say that my list is exactly like yours. I would just swap day and dawn. Nice. It, like I said, Day of the Dead is my favorite, but Dawn is my second favorite. So yeah, it's I was when you were saying that, I was thinking, God damn it, you John, don't say the rest of what you're gonna say. And be, <laughs> yeah, virtually the same as mine, except Day and Dawn is swapped. All right, well, let's take a break and come back and see if we're still on the same page when we come to the round table with our favorite zombie films. Film. Yeah, we're focusing on just one. So it's it's our favorite zombie film. Sorry. I forgive you. Thank you. Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. 
I'll be right back. <laughs> Anyone actually need a break? I'm gonna go pee due to boredom. I have to pee. Before we go back, I had an idea that I didn't want to derail the show with, but I started thinking about what Romero would do today with a zombie movie with everything going on. That could be really fascinating, but unfortunately we'll never see it. Can you picture a police force made up of trained zombies? Oh, shit. That the government may, yeah. I fucking love that. That's Protest of the dead. Protest of the dead. That would be an amazing movie. Uh, I would actually like to see Jordan Peele remake Night of the Living Dead. That could, that be, could be really good. Right? You just, you just made my dick hard saying that. Thanks. I'm just saying that I think <sighs> he could probably deliver an amazing film. And I honestly thought of that as soon as I finished it. Because the latest Blu-ray was the first time I watched it. So it was just last year. And it was just like, you know... I think Jordan Peele would fucking knock this out of the park. Fuck yeah, he could. Jordan Peele knocks almost everything out of the park that he does. Uh, I think Get Out's good. I don't think it deserves as much love as it gets. Although I've only seen it once, and I freely admit I should see it again. However, Us, I think, is fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Go see Get Out again. Yeah, I'll 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 check it out again. I don't know if I went in expecting something great or just went in not wanting to like it. Like, it was so long ago, it was one of those two where it was so popular, I wanted to be that guy that was just kind of like, you know what, fuck this film, it's not that good. Or I went in with expectations clear up here, and then it starts, and I'm just like, this movie's not a fucking masterpiece. Right. I just went into it just not even, like, expecting anything. I just, you know, so maybe that's why I liked it, I don't know. Yeah, and I can understand not finding it a masterpiece. I mean, there's a lot of movies I can point to where he does similar things, but you can't argue too much with his filmmaking ability. No, 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 no. Not taking anything away from the ability. Jason, you bring it back. And remember, Jason, we're on episode three. (laughs) Don't get me started again. I almost did a fucking spit take for real right there. We'll give you (laughs) what? We'll give you three seconds. Too bad, I'm taking four. (laughs) And we are back from break, and we are ready to discuss our number one zombie films of all time. Thanks for bringing it back, Jason. You're welcome. I don't want to go first, because I went first last time. I might have went first on the first episode, too, so no, I'm I'm taking a backseat here. All right, I'll step up. Uh... Part of me really wants to say Dawn of the Dead, but I'm going to take that off the table just because we talked about it so much. That's actually my exact thought, too. So I'm glad we're in Uh, agreement there. This was a really tough choice because there's a lot of movies that are kind of zombie movies, but aren't really zombie movies. Like um, Pontypool, I think, is a really fantastic atmospheric movie, but... I never quite feel it's a zombie movie because it's that infection of an idea kind of thing. But I kind of got to go with Shaun of the Dead. It's it, it just the great mix of horror and comedy that really works for me. The way uh, Edgar Wright builds the story right from the beginning. And if you look for it, you can see the entire map of the film plotted out. It's just a masterfully created movie. And it has a perfect balance of horror and comedy. There are plenty of jokes, but lots of really great horror moments that also really land emotionally. I mean, you have valid points. Uh, I do appreciate and and like that one. Um, I I just always end up tossing it more into the horror comedy. uh, That's fair. Kind of aspect. I'm probably going to kick myself in 10 minutes and think of something else. But no, 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 no. That is that is a very good pick. Uh, it's just w- once it comes to like the horror comedy aspect for me, yeah. uh, it, it's not up there. It's probably number three because uh, mm-hmm. I would say I like Zombieland a little bit better when, when we're talking yeah. zombie comedies and mm-hmm. uh, Return of the Living Dead. Uh, that one is so fucking good. 
that is a which, fantastic pick too. Which part? Wait, what? Oh, uh, the original, the the very first Return of the Living Dead. R- real quick, I don't mean to derail this, but like, why did they do that? Because they made Return of the Living Dead, but then they made Part Two, and it was kind of it was the same exact characters, right? But just in a different scenario, uh, wasn't it? Money. To be completely honest, uh, somebody picked up the rights to it, and there was this script already existing. And they just kind of changed a couple things to make it part two. And yeah, it just wasn't nearly as well done. They didn't have as experienced of a director, I don't believe. But yeah, they definitely went a lot harder into the comedy aspect. Whereas the original Return of the Living Dead has a lot of comedic aspects, but it still holds true to a horrific zombie tale. It is a good movie. I'm just glad that there's a naked chick throughout most of it. Linnea. A... Oh, God, I love Linnea. Oh, God, that ass. <sighs> anyway. I can't wait to interview her again. We should have her on. Yeah. Well, there you go. I can't be a part of that because I'll be over here <clears throat> doing something during it. But anyway. Um, am I next? Can I be next? Guys, can I go next? Yes, I guess you can be next. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you. Anyway, um, God, and you guys are going to shake your head at this choice, but it, it is my all-time favorite zombie Resident movie. Resident Evil not... 5? No, I, I consider those... <laughs> e- <laughs> you son of a bitch. I consider those more evil corporation movies. Um, my favorite zombie movie is, uh, hands down, Peter Jackson's Dead Alive. No, that's um, a fantastic pick. Okay. Yeah. I Because it's that one movie that I could show anyone and be all like, this movie is bonkers batshit crazy. It's a mm-hmm. zombie film, but it has heartfelt messages behind it. Like, you know, come on, Lionel, like, he's a great character, and you just, you're pulling for him throughout that movie. Even the, the comedic scenes where he's trying to take care of the baby. Like, <laughs> it's a cheesy film, and it's low budget, and you, but that's the charm of it. Like, that movie would not have worked at all if they made that like in today's world or by a big budget studio and just gave it a good budget. It, it works because of the way it was. Right. So, yep. By far, um, dead alive or in other countries, I think it's called brain dead. Brain dead. Um, yep. Either version is okay with me. Um, I, there's not much that the brain dead version has that the dead alive version doesn't have. I think just an extra couple of dialogue scenes and maybe a little bit extra gore, but even the the unrated dead alive version it's it's amazing um it, it, it's silly but it's not to the point where you would be like oh fuck this is stupid as hell like no you want it it's a train wreck that you want to watch happen i remember it, the first time i saw that it actually kind of grossed me out a little bit it did me too yeah it, 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 the fucking the the pudding scene yes, and the kid- that was the exact fucking scene where she like pops the boil yeah. and it goes into the pudding and the guy's eating it and it was just like oh god it makes me sick just thinking about it. and then her fucking ear falls in the pudding yeah and, oh my god that that movie's fantastic i i don't know why it's currently out of print i it's scream factory or some some company needs to pick up on on uh dead alive as soon as possible and get it back out on the market um i bought this movie in the mid 2000s and the only reason it, it stood out to me is because it had a, a DVD cover that said on it, the goriest film of all time. Like, come on, what 18, 19 year old isn't going to look at that and be like, holy shit, I got to have that movie. You know what I mean? Um, blew me the fuck away. It was a party movie over here for years. Like, that's a movie that you can turn on and in and, and like a room full of noise and people still can enjoy that watching that movie because it's more about the visuals than anything else for the most part. Um, you can get something out of it no matter who you are. You can watch it for the visuals, the blood, the gore, or you can also enjoy it because of the the uh, relationship interest between Lionel and that girl. I forgot her name, but yeah. And, and he cares about his mother, for Christ's sake. You don't see that hardly in any other zombie movie like you do in, in Dead Alive. So that's my pick. And... I don't know what else to say. The, the lawnmower scene. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Potty's over. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
that one starts off and it just gradually builds like it is kind of gross but it gets to the point where you're so overwhelmed with it where it's not gross anymore it's just it it, it becomes a comedy and you're just kind of laughing with it i like the part where they went to go look for uh like sedatives for his mom who was already zombified and they talked to that doctor and he's all like sedatives i don't have tranquilizers i do (laughs) he's like an old nazi yeah (laughs) like some you're looking for tranquilizers (laughs) (laughs) that it's so quotable it's man i i'm gonna let you go here in just a second my god i could speak all fucking week about that (laughs) that movie fucking fantastic uh, for myself, I find it actually kind of interesting that you guys go the route of the horror comedy. And like, I agreed with Jason earlier that Dawn of the Dead is my favorite, but we've already kind of talked about that. I don't really want to focus more on it. And if I do, I, I kind of want to do it when the, the new edition comes out and we can actually, you know, dig into that. If, if we even feel like it, who gives a shit? Cause we've already covered it, but That got me thinking about other ones, and I have to say that the comedies never really came to mind. Um, For me, it was really between two, and the distant third would be Return of the Living Dead, just because I enjoy that film so much. It's it's so good, and I love the nihilistic ending, but for me, zombies are terrifying, and, and they're all about the downfall of our modern world, and Train to Busan is a modern masterpiece. But I have to go with Tom Savini's Night of the Living Dead. Wow. Good pick. I absolutely adore that film. Uh, And I think it's Tom Savini's best work as a director. What else has he done other than that? He's done quite a bit, actually. Um, But Directed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Off the top of my head, I can't really think of them. Not a lot of them are noteworthy, sadly. But mm. with that one, I, I think he really shows what he is capable of when actually given a budget and, and you know, given some support. Because I, I know George was there as a producer and, and he was allowed to actually kind of give it his own flair, his own vision. And, you know, I thought about including it in the discussion because it was based off of George's original script. Well, it wasn't just George's, but uh, George actually took that original one and rewrote it. And then Tom Savini helped polish it because it was really his idea to take Barbara and turn her into the heroine that we have in the film. And I just think that film is so overlooked. It's criminal because there's tension in it. It starts off really quick. And it just ratchets up the tension. And we have great characters compared to the original where Barbara is just catatonic for half the fucking film. And this one, she, yeah, she does have a mental breakdown, but she uses that. She becomes dangerous. Uh, You know, we, we not only have the racial subtext between uh, Ben and uh, Cooper, but we also have the, the sexism that was really a hot topic in the nineties and still is in all honesty. And I I like how all that kind of meshes during this apocalypse. And I truly think that's superior to, to George's. And I think that's the one that should be included in the the trilogy. Um, I know that's blasphemous to say, I just think he did such an amazing job with that film and he had such good actors and the effects are great. And I, yes, I know it's not the film that Savini wanted to deliver us, but the, the sad truth is that it was a studio film that came out in the early nineties and the MPAA would simply not allow the film he wanted to make. Well, um, I forget cause I did watch his documentary, but I forget what he said. What, uh, what was he wanting in the film that didn't make it? Was it just gore effects or was there something else? Well, I haven't picked up the book yet because there's a whole book on the subject. But I I know that the producers cut scenes and just wanted to keep it 
streamlined. So I don't know if there was extra stuff outside of the farmhouse or whatnot. That's kind of what what I have read made it sound like that it was extra things that kind of expanded the world a little bit. But I do know that he had to change and reshoot some of the, the gore just because the MPAA at that point in time wouldn't stand for it. And it being a studio film, he couldn't go out with an X. So right. for instance, the zombie that comes through the window and Barbara is just blasting away in the chest, screaming, is it dead? Is it dead yet? It was supposed to be much more graphic. And Tom's original treatment that he wanted to shoot, it was supposed to be a haggard woman that Barbara actually saw as her mother. So like, that's, an, that's an interesting concept that we'd actually get to see some of her, her trauma and her family issues kind of play out in that aspect. Now it might be a little cliche nowadays, but at that point in time, I, I think it could have worked. So, Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. No, good choice. It is a better movie, all in all, than the original. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, we are going to get so much fucking hate for that statement. But hey, I, if, I agree. If we do get hate, well, at least we'll know people's listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that front, uh, I wanted to kind of address it in the beginning, but we just got on a roll and just couldn't stop the momentum of the fucking zombies. Um Cody, you got some flack, man. And I'm going to give you the chance right now to kind of redeem yourself. Um, A, you got flack for your list, but we we can disregard that because that's your list. But the major flack also around your list is that you alluded that Hatchet would be on it, and there is no Hatchet film on your top ten. Oh, yeah, and you know why? Because (laughs) going into that recording... Like you two, I was planning on putting everything down in like a WordPad document so I would know it. And then I, I, something happened. I had a really bad day that day. I actually, and I didn't want to bring it up like during or before or after the recording, but man, not get to uh, put down a list. So I was kind of, you know, shooting from the hip essentially. And I think I also, I made another statement as well. I think right before the my countdown started, and I didn't add up. It didn't add up either. So the movies that I listed, they are um, for the most part all of my favorites. I did leave out some movies that are common sense that would be uh, my favorites. Like I did leave out Ghostbusters. That's one of my favorites. But you know, uh, oh man, and it's. It, this episode seems to all be about, you know, having uh, unpopular opinions, right? Like the original <laughs> Ghostbusters. The original That's why we're the misfits. Yeah. The original Ghostbusters is a movie that has not aged well either. Um, it is a, almost a perfectly made movie if this was still the 80s. But, you know, uh, in today's ADD world, it, it, it I can't get anyone to sit down and watch that movie with me, John. Okay. Like, so I yeah. haven't. I haven't watched Ghostbusters in years just because I can't get no one to sit down and want to watch it. Army of Darkness, I can give them a quick rundown of what that movie is and say, hey, this is only going to take 80 minutes of your time. And I watch it with them, and as long as they understand it's a fucking comedy, they, they're they okay with it. Same thing with Dead Alive. I can tell them exactly like what they're in for, and they enjoy it by the end of the movie. Um, with Ghostbusters, and I'm not saying like I dislike the movie because of it, but um, it's it is kind of an outdated movie. Like it's it's slow paced, and it, you know if you if you stick it out to the end, it's of course it's a perfect movie to watch. But that's the problem. Today's world is all about boom, 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 and you know special effects and action sequences, and you know and and we don't get character development as much as we did in the 80s and and even some in the 90s. So. Uh, I don't know. I didn't put it in there because I do feel like there's better made movies uh, than Ghostbusters. And uh, what was my number one top movie? It was Army of Darkness. And my yeah. number two, I believe, was TMNT 1990. Yep. I think. Yep. So and I do, John, I feel the TMNT original movie is better than Ghostbusters. I, I don't Oh Well, I have a Ghostbusters tattoo for Christ's sakes. And that's because overall, the franchise is what brought me to 
what I found happiness first in my life as a kid. Uh, so overall, franchise wise, Ghostbusters is it. But as an original movie, it's a little outdated. Like maybe they should give it that Star Wars treatment, like they did. What was that in the nineties? Give it thirty three extra percent or something like that. I don't fucking know. Rework the the special effects, maybe. I don't fucking give it the um, give it the Argento uh cut that they did for Dawn of the Dead. You know what I'm talking about? They cut that Dawn of the Dead into a much quicker movie, and some people kind of like that version. Do, do you guys real quick? Do you guys like that version of the movie? Did you watch it? Uh, I've seen the three versions that are on the DVD set that was released uh ten years or so ago. Yeah, so and you... they they all kind of blur together for me, so okay. I can't really say which is which. Each yeah. one has its pluses and its minuses. I would love to see kind of a mix of all three to kind of pick and choose. I believe that it actually exists. Uh, I I think there's like this a huge cut on YouTube. I, I actually watched mm-hmm. it years ago, but um. Believe it or not, I have not actually seen the Argento cut yet. I think that's also known as the European cut, but uh, mm-hmm. oh. I've, I've seen the the theatrical and I believe the quote unquote director's cut. Uh, it's not the director's cut. No, no, it's not. It's just a kind of an expanded cut. Because but... Romero even said that he doesn't even prefer the extended cut. I think. I think he said that. Right, and there's there's actually sometimes where that's the case, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, that, that's remember, a really tough one. I remember the Argento cut. There was a number of things in there I did really like more than, than the theatrical. But then there were, were these odd editing choices that were made probably just because of what was available to Argento at the time that just didn't quite make sense and didn't flow quite as well that I would like to see reverted back to the original. Right. But yeah. Goblin, come on. You had Goblin doing oh, the score. Well, yeah. I know that much. Yeah, there was a lot more Goblin in the Argento cut. So, yeah, I I don't know. I think that they should recut Ghostbusters and just not try to bury the original theatrical version, but there there could be a faster-paced version of it and more presentable for the 2020s, you know, for, for today's world. I don't know. Well, I get what you're saying. I don't I don't think they should recut it. Um I was about ready to actually uh to hold a, a secret meeting with Jason and see if we fire you. But I understand what you're saying now after, after you kind of expanded that, you know, it, it's, it's a pacing issue. When you said it's outdated and doesn't really work. I was just, I was reaching for the phone. Like, yeah, all right, Jason. I was ready to, I was ready to throw hands at that point. <laughs> but, but when you're talking pacing and whatnot, I completely understand what you're saying there. And I think they their way <laughs> of fixing it is with the new Ghostbusters movie coming out. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is just the pacing because if you look past its outdated 1980s flaws, Ghostbusters really is one of the funniest films of all time. And mm-hmm. it's because it, it, it has down-to-earth, realistic humor, dry humor. You know, Bill Murray, Dan, all of them, they put it all together. It's like lightning in a bottle. So, yes, if you look past the pacing issues, it is a great fucking film. So, don't fire me, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, then, real and quick. And that was our special look back at Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> well, real quick, just because it was brought up that you alluded that Hatchet would be on your list. Um, and you you said that, uh, God, what did you say? Two and two and four uh, were your, your second favorites. But, how, okay, so how would you rank those just to clear things up for people? Like worst to best or? Sure, worst to best. Oh, okay. Um, I, for me, Hatchet 3 fell short, but just because the death scenes felt rushed. Um, okay. And it, it, Hatchet 3 didn't seem like it, it, it brought as much to the table. Like, 1 and 2 felt like they just went balls to the wall, and like, what else could you have done? You could have actually have ended the franchise at the end of number 2, because... You know, she went back with the shotgun like, fuck yeah, and fucking blew his head off with the shotgun. That could have been the end of everything right there. Like, you know what I mean? So Hatchet 3 just felt like they slowed down just a bit. I kind of compare it to episode 3 of the first season of Ash vs. Evil Dead. Like, the first two episodes was balls to the wall really fast and just in your face. But then episode 3 felt like a regular TV show. I don't know if you'll agree with that or not, but 
So for me, Hatchet 3 is, is the worst. After that, it would be uh, Victor Crowley. And, and I only say that because, damn it, they stayed on the fucking plane for too long. That was my problem with it. And, and it was kind of weird not having Danielle Harris in that movie. Even though it wasn't even called Hatchet, it was kind of a new thing. And I've read an interview with Adam Green and Victor Crowley. Like, the Hatchet trilogy is done. Now... The Victor Crowley uh, movie. That's there. I think he's planning on doing two more to like finish out the the story of of this new uh, this new trilogy that he's gonna do. Um, so yeah, Victor Crowley uh, that comes next after Hatchet Three because of no Dania Harris and too much time on a plane. Um, next would be the first Hatchet, and I only say that because it's the, yeah, I know, I know. It. I only say that because of the first one. It had a couple of missteps for me. Um, the pacing I did think was a little weird, but also I'm not sure if I liked all of the characters. I didn't even like the way that the main girl portrayed the, the main character in the first movie. I wasn't a fan. Um, I thought she was way too snooty, way too stuck up. She wouldn't even talk to the fucking nerd. Okay. So I get that. And and, yeah. So, um, but, but again, the, the first hatchet has one of the best death scenes ever. And that's when he grabs that lady's head and, and just the, the camera fucking, t- t- you know, circles around it. And that, that was fucking fantastic. But, um, yeah, so that's second to best. And the absolute best to me is hatchet too. I love how that movie's set up. Um, I, th- every death scene in that movie is fucking bonkers. Like, I don't know. Fucking great movie. The only problem i have with hatchet 2 is um the color tone of the whole film when the blood flows it's not as fluid red uh mm-hmm. as it is in the other movies if you guys know what i mean so uh yeah that's how i would rank the hatchet movies sec the hatchet 2 is my favorite one. Oh, and the fucking backstory that you get in hatchet 2 of victor crowley and kane hodder plays a sympathetic character he cries on camera like hatchet 2 all the way it's definitely the best one out of all of them to me Okay, and I don't want to dwell on that. I just wanted to clear some things up because I know there are some questions, but uh, we might have to circle back around. Maybe we'll start doing, you know, retrospectives at some point or something like that. But yeah, just wanted to clear that up. All right. Well, thanks for putting me on the spot, asshole. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we, we've given our favorites. What What are some zombie films that you would suggest for people then? Because we've kind of all, you know, went as to what our favorite is and why. And, you know, I can't really expand upon any of them because you guys are right. Like, there's no arguing the quality of any of these films. Like, I even went and watched uh, Tom Savini's uh, Night of the Living Dead just before we recorded. And, you know, without going too deep into it, besides saying that I think it's great, his best work and tension-filled, there's not much else I can say because it it is, to me, it's, it's that good. Um, there's this one zombie movie, and God damn it, I don't know if I even remember the proper name for it, but I'm thinking it was called Flight of the Dead. It was kind of a play on the whole snakes on a plane thing with Samuel L. Jackson, but it, I think it was called Flight of the Dead, and it took place on a plane, which kind of makes me a hypocrite because I'm saying heck, Richter Crowley sucked because it was on a plane. But no, this was a zombie movie that was com- almost completely like on an airplane when they were in the air. And I, I think it was called Flight of the Dead, I think. Uh, I rented it off Netflix years ago, and it was one of those zombie movies that just caught me by surprise. Um I just remember this one scene where the zombie gets stabbed through the mouth with an umbrella. It was closed. But then after the umbrella uh, impaled the head, then they opened the umbrella up. And it was just kind of funny to see the zombie stagger around with an opened umbrella through its head. Um, so, yeah, that would be my pick uh, of obscure zombie movies that really no one's probably seen. I think it's called Flight of the Dead. Uh, I think it's Flight of the Living Dead. They went all in on that parody name. Oh, Okay. Did it have some sort of snakes on a plane tagline that I can't remember? Because I feel like it did. I don't remember. Okay. I feel like it did, too, if that means anything. Like, I have no idea what it would be. But I, I just had that feeling that it was on the coattails of that, so. Yeah. Have you guys, uh, Jason, have you, you have heard of the movie then, right? Yeah. I've okay. heard of it, not seen it. Same. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, hey, guys, I recommend it to you. <laughs> 
my brain is just not coming up with good zombie movies today. Um, well, I'll, I'll if, go real quick. I'm, I'll save you some time. Okay. Uh, All right. There's the obvious ones like I already mentioned of uh, Train right. of the Sun and, and Return of the Living Dead. But for uh, a kind of obscure one, and, you know, you might not even classify a zombie film, but I really don't know what else you'd even fucking classify it. Well, I, I guess the title kind of gives it away, but I, I would say Mutant, and it really does kind of feel like a zombie film. Um, have any of you guys seen that one? It was uh, mid to late 80s, kind of. No, but it's another one I'm aware of. It's I've it's heard of it. It's these two brothers traveling across the south, and they have a car accident, and they end up stranded in this small town, and while they're trying to get their car fixed, there's an outbreak of illness that turns people into these mutant zombie like creatures. And I think they were trying to avoid zombie and and went with mutant, but really the only thing mutant about them is their hand like splits open and there's like a, an acid that they can use, but past that it's just a zombie. And I went into that just expecting complete and utter shit. And sometimes I'm just in the mood for that. I gotta say, it actually kind of surprised me. I I did enjoy it. There were definitely some aspects to it that displayed good filmmaking, and just overall, I had fun with it. So if you can go in with kind of low expectations, not expecting, you know, Return of the Living Dead or Train to Busan or anything like that, I think you can have a lot of fun with it. And uh, you have to be forgiving. It was the 80s and took place Mm -hmm. in the South. There are a lot of Confederate flags. I think it's used as wallpaper in a bar. But just be warned. <sighs> you know, I want to say Night of the Creeps, but I can't quite say that's a zombie movie. It's I, more I, of could, a, I could totally go with that. I wouldn't say that's yeah, that. Yeah, but obscure, it's more of a, an alien infection type of movie. Right, Not, right. But it's still a really good movie in that same vein. Um, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's Fred Decker. I, yeah. You can go no wrong with him. I, I, I sung his praises with Monster Squad. So, mm-hmm. If you like Shaun of the Dead, I definitely recommend Cockneys vs. Zombies. It starts out as a heist movie. A bunch of people robbing a bank trying to save an old folks home. <laughs> but then... A group of zombies ends up being unearthed and starts running rampant through London. And you have old people versus zombies, and it is just a hilarious treat of a movie. But aside from that, another one that's a bit more serious. I actually really liked the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Maggie. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I saw that. That that was a really interesting, like, humanized down-to-earth yeah. look at it. It didn't blow me away. It's not, you know, a big zombie action movie, but I liked the take of it as a more personal story. Right, and that one is a lot more just, it's a disease, and mm-hmm. once it takes you, there's no coming back. Or mm-hmm. is there? Yeah, and that's some good picks I got off the top of my head. Well, since you got two, I'm gonna go with another obscure one. Um... And it's not even really a zombie movie. It's, it's kind of a, a creature feature because there are zombies, but there are vampires and aliens. and But uh, Freaks of Nature. Um, it's just this comedy with all these different creatures in it. And uh, I really enjoyed that one. I, I do suggest checking out Freaks of Nature. Yeah, I almost mentioned that when uh, Scout's Guide came up earlier. Right? Yeah. I actually prefer that to Scout's Guide. Yeah. Well, fuck the both of you then. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Suck it, Scout's Guide. <laughs> well, goddamn, that was a really fun episode, you guys. Indeed it was. Yeah, I really enjoyed getting to kind of dive into, you know, George's dead films. I, I've I've always kind of wanted to do that and just never have. Um, I don't know why. I mean, I, I am a fan of them, and I know so many people are. But just never had the opportunity. So, yeah, I was, I was really excited when uh, you guys were, were down for talking about them. Fuck yeah. But, all right. Uh, you guys have to excuse We're a little tired on this episode <laughs> because, you know, John's technical difficulties that took an extra hour. Right, right. Me and Jason were 
tired. <laughs> no, this is my afternoon. Um, <laughs> oh, well, we want to wrap this up. You know, this is the first time we actually kind of have an idea of what we're doing next. So yes. do we want to tell the people? Yeah, yeah, I think we'll let that go. Uh, next week, join us for episode four. Misfits in space. Space. You're supposed to say it too, John. Space. Okay, great job. All right, we're <laughs> out. Uh, there what? needs to be a little asterisk included here, people. We are a bi-weekly show. I'm not that quick at editing or so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's all right. Jason thought earlier this was uh, episode four, and now he that's thinks that's why I that wanted to take the show out and get it right. <laughs> 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 I'll use that as the actual end. There you go. Well, thank you everyone for joining us on episode three of Movie Misfits. Jason, sorry I took that from you. Oh well. <laughs> Curse you. <laughs> <laughs> we belong, Dad. Oh, God. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. Give me a break. It's the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life! Do you agree, Jason? Nope. <laughs> I'll cry myself to sleep again tonight, Jason. Well, who are you? We're the movie. movie. Misfits. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.